Terraria's look mechanic is quite the interesting one, implemented in Terraria 1.4 as a semi-hidden passive stat that dynamically changes throughout your playthrough. In the past, we've looked at the ways you can maximise this to give you a significantly boosted drop rate on items like the Rod of Discord. Today, however, we're going to be amping it up to 11. The question is, you see, what would happen if we were to surpass the vanilla look cap and increase our look so much, probability doesn't even exist anymore? Well, as you'd expect, things can get a little crazy. Before we do jump into it though, if you're enjoying these vids, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe as it truly helps out the channel. Alright then, let's call some chaos, shall we? First off, when it comes to increasing our look to the stratosphere and beyond, even with the removal of the look cap, there just isn't enough look boosting items in the base game to get any broken results. So we will be using the dream look mod that allows us to adjust our look in the config to a maximum of 50, which although might not sound like much on the surface, is plenty enough. So I mean, what does this get you? Well, for starters, you'll start noticing strange things around your world immediately, like the enemy spawns. Not only is the diversity much or much less, but depending on your biome, you'll basically only see the top two to three rarest enemies that can spawn. Oh, and when it comes to critters, well, expect them to be gold every single time, making even debatably the rarest entity in the game, the golden seahorse, seem like a common spawn. And unsurprisingly, things get even more crazy underground, with the cavern being full of gold bunnies and any little pools of water being crammed full of gold goldfish. Other than that though, it's basically just mimic the law. So what about a completely different biome like the dungeon? Well, interestingly, I found the spawn variety much higher here, due to the bat ground wall spawning mechanics. Basically, due to the rarest enemies in the dungeon consisting of non-native background wall spawns, I found my farm to weirdly mostly have enemies that I'd usually see in different parts of the dungeon. Also, expect dungeon spirits to spawn anytime they can, making ectoplasm incredibly plentiful. Okay then, so we get that your entire world's ecosystem will be shaken up big time. So what else changes? Well for starters, don't you worry about money anymore, as not only will tons more drop from everything, but any pot, regardless of the odds, will summon a gold coin portal, making you insanely rich. Also, if you're looking at spending that money, your travelling merchant will have a much higher chance of selling his rarest stock, though I did find this a little inconsistent to track. Also, if you're an avid fisher, let's just say your job will be a lot more rewarding, basically multiplying your fishing power astronomically due to your higher luck. This basically just means that even with no fishing armor accessories, I was able to get a ton of goodies very quickly. And you know what the best part is? Any crates obtained will be the best of the damn best, literally giving me a sundial every single time. Honestly, the amount of rigging that can be done with this mod is insane. <laughs> At this point, however, I want to show you a few things I was surprised to find unaffected by the massive look. Shaking trees, for example, I was for sure to get a sugar glider every time. But no, from this testing, it seems pretty normal. Also, despite the fishing crates being affected by luck, I found treasure bags to not give any more dev sets out than usual, and the Halloween goodie bags seemed unaffected too. Additionally, although luck does increase damage, due to the way it is calculated, having 50 doesn't increase it any more than normal, which is a little disappointing. Nevertheless, the spawn and drop adjustments alone make this one hell of a blast to play around with, and so it got me thinking. If an enemy is dropping every item in a loot pool, as long as they're not mutually exclusive, what enemy could drop the most items at once on a kill? Well, while I don't have an exact answer for this, from my findings, if you kill enemies during the Halloween and Christmas event in a soul biome near hell, I could get a whopping 14 different items from a jungle mimic, which although it does sound insane, hills in comparison to the 39 I could get from a pirate corsair. Just let that sink in, and I'm sure there are plenty ways you can increase this even further. So there we have it, what maximum slash infinite look looks like in Terraria. As expected, it completely breaks the game in many ways I didn't even expect. I bet there are still a load of other underlying effects as well. So if you ever find yourself playing around with this mod, let me know your discoveries down below. This has been Socrates, and I'll see you in the next one.